Well, hey there, team, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome to Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun. Oh my god, listen to this music. <laughs> now, look, um, this game, I'll be releasing this video up against um, Embargo, right? Just doing a general overview. This one's a little bit deeper than normal, being that I've, I've been sitting on this for a couple of weeks in pre-release, and I've been playing it in chunks off and on, and I love it. But, you know, long story short, um, this game is actually really, really good fun. It is a throwback sort of retro boomer shooter, whatever, you, you know, whatever term you'd like to use, but I think people understand when I say that. It has like a pixel art style, this soundtrack, the gore, everything is very much a love letter to d uh, games of that day and to the actual Warhammer um, mythos. You play as this ultramarine um, trying to just thump your way through fighting waves of uh, like chaos um, and you've got uh, especially in the early going, there's a lot of like, um, uh, what is it, a lot of change. Cinch? Sneech? I've always called him Cinch. Um, and uh, and in all of the uh, sort of plague stuff as well, Nurgle starts coming into it into chapter two. So there's probably more as well. I don't want to spoil anything and give away, there's, but there's, there's boss fights. So maybe you can connect some dots and that. Um, uh, we're going to jump in and have a bit of a look at it today. It's coming out of Focus Entertainment, or Focus Home, whatever they're called these days. I really like them. Um, let's just go chapter select. What happens if I go chapter one and start there? Yeah, see, I mean, look at this art. It's so good. Um, also, the price point is quite low, actually, um, like bordering between, you know, higher cost indie, low cost double A. I think it's 30 bucks Australian, maybe 15, 20 American and worth every cent. Fantastic. Um, anyway, let's just put it on medium. Though, I've played some on the, the hardcore stuff, and it's very grueling. Um, Alright, off we go. Oh, what a game. Nothing, once touched by the hand of chaos, remains untainted. Right. You are under the dominion of the Ordo Malleus to assist my investigations <laughs> into a world that has already felt that fell into it. God, this is brilliant. Raya has been under the close watch of the Inquisition since the Green Skull War. The Forge world remains largely secure, but we have picked up concerning energy readings in the surrounding system. I have my suspicions, although we have not had sufficient time to pinpoint the origin of these foul energies. While most of the planet remains unaffected, it is my belief that rogue elements within the Adeptus Mechanicus may have been experimenting with a surviving fragment of Inquisitor Drogon. Oh good, a MacGuffin. That's what we need. Your mission is to assist me in locating a fragment of the power source. Yes, ma'am. While I consider this threat extremely serious, your superiors have seen fit to second only a handful of you to my supervision. In the absence of a larger force, we should pray to the Emperor that this does not develop into a more dire situation. Right. This servo skull will guide you. Yeah. In Commodus here is one of the few sanctified and preserved from the purging of Drogon's heretical archives. Together, you will search sites where communication has become sporadic. Sporadic, right. Should gotcha. you encounter any opposition, you may assume they have been tainted by the ruinous powers. Suffer not the heretic to live. Oh, of course not. Can't have that. While I continue my investigations aboard the Crown, you will be deployed to a habitation zone we lost contact with several cycles ago. Roger. You should assume the situation to be extremely hostile. Beware. We do not know how far the taint of the arch enemy spreads. So good. Even the framing of these shots. Ooh, that looks like a bit of a dud landing. It's alright, I'm good to go. So you've got lots of different weapons. It's very much like Doom, right? Which is probably apparent as soon as you see it. Um, we've got our briefing. Let's go. Landing zone incorrect. So old mate's going to help brief us by talking in simlish. Oh, look at this. Poor Andrew didn't make it. I've got a... I've got a chain sword. It doesn't... It takes a bit to understand how it works. It's it's more of a... Um, you dive on people with it and chainsaw them. So you can't really pull it out or anything. I mean, I guess you can hold this down and... 
you know, feel big about yourself. But the most important button that you need to remember is this. And so you go into this, like, bullet time. And then you... Let them, <laughs> let them know who you represent, boys. Yeah, that's a good shield to have, brother. Now, we'll jump over here. So until we get a gun, it's chainsawed all the way, but that suits me just fine. So there's a couple of cool, really, really cool mechanics in here. Um, one of them, uh, it'd be hard to explain without a weapon, but it uses, and we need to, we need to unlock keys and, and that sort of stuff. So it has that very much the doom trappings. Um, but it, it uses a strength toughness mechanic, which is straight out of the tabletop. Uh, now we also, we have to sprint down this. It shows us that we have this F, if we press F, we, we zoom forward, like that. Um, sort of like a hero ability. It's, it's, it's good for closing gaps, but you don't use it that much, I found. Oh, whoops, I'm gonna miss it. Oh no, got it. Wait, did that door hit me? That door hit me and I lost health. Huh. Um. Yeah, so your weapons will all have a strength, and when you point them at a dude, they'll have a toughness. And if it's if it's even Steven, so four versus four, it does normal damage. But if it's above or below, it actually takes a significant damage pump or or dump. Here we go. Look at this. Give me the music. Oh, <laughs> let it rip. So good. So you can see down the very bottom right. It's hard to see. It says bolt gun. It says strength four. Um, and when I pointed at dudes, like this guy, Strength 3, or Toughness 3, you can sort of see at the top center that those guys die pretty quickly. It's got three and a little green arrow up. And what that's saying is that we're going to do a chunk more damage against them with this gun. Right? Oh, it's so gory. It's so good. So this... We have to fight waves, basically. And this is a really, really good mechanic because I hate monster closets. Um, I recognize that they're an important part of the history of games. And I'll explain them in a second. I'm just a little bit busy at the moment. Then, and then the red hue goes, the doors unlock and we can move forward. So essentially, because of the way level design worked back when they made Doom, um, the one of the ways that they they used to sort of ratchet up tension and, um, you know, being ambushed, all that sort of stuff, was monster closeting, which is where you'll have, like, a hidden wall compartment over here that you can't interact with or anything, and then when you trigger, essentially, a, a world switch, it, that door will open behind you. So you'll come through a room, you'll clear all the corners, there's no dudes in here, whatever, and yet you'll walk somewhere and then all the walls will fall down and monsters jump out, and... and it ranges from okay and effective to absolutely egregious and unpleasant. Um, and we give Doom a pass because that's how you had to do it back then. That's It was limited mechanics, right? Um, but I, when, when we have modern games that throw back to this era that do monster closets, I get furious because it's quite cheap. Especially some of them really lean into it and it's really bad. Um... Anyway, so the way this game seems to do with it, uh, intentional or otherwise, is that you will have these rooms where the door will just lock. It'll demonically lock, and, and it's a purge. I call it a purge. I don't know if it has a term. But essentially, you will have to arena fight within a set room, and dudes will sort of just start teleporting in, or they'll be there already, or whatever. And I, I find it to be significantly different from how a monster closet works, because it's less about trying to catch you with your pants down for a cheap death, and more about, um, okay, here we go, here's an arena, almost wave-based ba thing that we're about to pop off on. And it, I think it's it's much more, it's much more acceptable, it's, it's fair, it's reasonable, but it also creates these little mini, well, I wouldn't call them boss scenarios, but these mini, uh, well, you know, scenarios, these wave based I, I don't know what the term you would call it, right? But it's not a vignette even, but just a, a little stage. Oh, look at this bloke out here. A little staged scenario where you get tested, where you get squeezed. The game squeezes you. You fight waves of dudes. 
so good. Now, we're not just going to be fighting cultists all the way. Again, I don't want to necessarily go too spoilery. But I don't know how much we're going to cover here. But um, there are definitely, there are chaos space marines. There are demons. Hang on, I've just gone around in a circle. Around here, I reckon. Here we go. Um, it's very slanish heavy in the beginning, but there's also, like I said, I've seen Nurgle as well, and I can only assume the other, the other two chaos sects are represented later on as well. Um, they all have varying strength, and then you have different strength weapons. What have I seen so far? I've seen the shotgun, the plasma gun, the heavy bolter. I think that's probably it. There and the heavy bolt is like the chain gun from Doom. It's so good. Um, and it is one of those things where, like, if you're not using the right strength versus toughness, you're gonna go through ammo. If I'm trying to fight a strength seven dude with this bolter, I'm gonna have to put four mags into him to kill him. And and let's get him. So you can see at the top. You might even need to rewind it, but his strength. Uh, his toughness was four versus my four, which means it's just even, even damage. Right, you see? So he's not exactly melting. But if you were to bring, let's say, a heavy bolter to the fight, which is strength five, so you get, you get way more damage. So all you gotta do is up the strength by one. However, and if you're a sweat for Warhammer, if you more than double strength or toughness, it does ridiculous damage. In, in, in the tabletop, that's usually an insta-kill. So if you hit, if you hit a strength, uh, a strength four space marine, or toughness four marine with like a... God, I'm so rusty, I haven't played the tabletop in a decade, but I don't know, like a Laz Cannon? Are they like, are they like strength eight or something? Well, I mean, he's only got one wound anyway, but okay, okay, let's say you hit a human hero. Uh, or even a space marine hero, because humans tend to have toughness three, like these dudes. So it's all true to the law, from what I understand. That's, so say you, you, you hit the, a dude with three wounds, and your chainsaw only goes for so long as well. You hit a dude that has three wounds, which means he's got three hit points, and he's got toughness four, but you hit him with a las cannon with strength eight, That's he dies immediately. All it's got to do is do one wound, and it will totally kill him. Great way to deal with big monsters. Can be tough though because, I mean unless they've moved the goalposts, Warhammer has over the years struggled with power creep. If I recall, the highest toughness you could ever, the highest strength weapon you could ever get was 10. But they might have changed that because they want to sell more models. You sound jaded, Scar. No, not at all. Um, I could be wrong. I can't remember. But usually toughness 6 was the highest as well, which sort of made like, if you think about it from that framework, if strength 10's the highest and toughness 6 is the highest, that kind of makes toughness 6 monsters. We're talking like big tyrannid bosses and all that. In invulnerable to... Well, not invulnerable. Uh, immune to one taps from super weapons. Whereas a strength 10 would take out a strength 5. Woo! Anyway, this is absolutely fun in a bun. I can close the gap with F if I want, and then chainsaw. And to be honest, it's not a bad idea to deal with those marines because this is the best gun that I've kind of got at the moment. And you want to you want to leverage that strength difference if you can. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh. Fire the cannons, sir! <laughs> That's cool. You got another one for me? No. Set. Um, what else is there worth mentioning? Oh yeah, here we go. You get little weapon upgrades. That's the machine spirit upgrade. I don't know, can I get to the help menu from here? I can't. But it explains a lot of it. Um, I've got grenades I haven't really been throwing. But this gives your gun a bit of an upgrade. You can get, like, sort of power magazines of ammo as well. I came down here, didn't I? Yeah. I'm a little lost. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. So good. Probably could have skipped that whole arena. Oh, uh, you know what? I, prob I probably triggered something. So my brain's off a little bit while I talk about the game. I'm not necessarily spatial reasoning very hard. Oh, that missed you. So the damage adds up after a while. <laughs> Let him know, mate. So the shotgun's lower strength, but and and kind of situational. Um, the plasma gun is super strong. I think it's strength seven, right? So that's a really good boss basher, but it, it it doesn't put a lot of rounds down range. But here you go, plague toad. Um, see, they're a bit of they're a bit beefy, aren't they? Uh, yeah. So what I was saying before, like if you're in a situation where you're potentially I don't know out of ammo or like this, where we're trying to fight str toughness four space marines with a strength four weapon, chainsawing them is a legit strategy because ammo is abundant throughout the level. But when you get in these pitched battles, especially when it starts turning it up, and even on, like, I played on all the difficulties, but even on medium, going into especially Act 2 and the last levels of Act 1, and Act 1 is brilliant, by the way, um, culminating in such a great finale, um, it actually gets really quite tough, you know? Um, it gets you sweating. Those explosions are so powerful. Um, mentioning Act 2 again as well, um, it, it actually immediately makes me think of the original Doom chapters. I think everyone played the, the life out of the first one because that was shareware. Um, it was like the first eight levels of Doom or something like that. But then, anyone that knows, as soon as you move to the next chapter, it's almost like a sequel. You, like, it's a chapter. But in a in an actual fairly significant sense of it, I think, I think people will understand what I'm sort of getting at. That each of the chapters not only feel different, but they ratchet up as well. And this game does the same sort of thing. It really, really makes me think of Doom more than any other sort of boomer shooter or whatever you want to call them that I've played in recent times. Um, there's also some really interesting uh, interplays as well. Like, um, we might come up against them shortly, but pink horrors, right? Now, most, if you're a normie, you probably don't know much about what a pink horror is. I think that's the way that we need to go down there, actually. Yeah. Um, Pink Horror is sort of a cinch demon where if you kill it, the gimmick is that it splits in half. Now, I'm not really much of a, a, a chaos dude, but if ever I did play anyone, it would probably be cinch because I really like, th like that. I like Pink Horrors. Um, and if you kill the Pink Horror in, in, in the game, in a tabletop, it'll cut in half into two lesser blue horrors, right? It's al always a really cool idea. Um, same thing happens here. So when you kill pink horrors, they spawn two blue horrors. However, if you chainsaw them in half, you can circumvent their ability to... And look at this, we've got a different biome. Got this sort of library thing going on. Churchy. Very cool. The, all the biomes are so fun. So, um, yeah, if you see a pink horror, trying to chainsaw them by priority is like a legit strat to circumvent their ability to spawn into two blue horrors. Does that make sense? So... Which is great, because one of the thoughts I had when I first started playing it was, does the strength system not undermine the chainsaw? Like, the chainsaw, whatever you want to call it. Like, here we go. So we'll kill him, and he'll pop out two blue horrors. It's so good to see that. As someone who grew up playing second and third edition Warhammer and, and Rogue Trader. Yes, I'm old. I get it. Um, to see this stuff 
in this graphic styling. It's, uh, you know, as a solid love letter game. It's not some shovelware thing abusing the license. It's just fantastic. Now, if we chainsaw him, we should be able to stop him from spawning, right? I've come up against um, uh, aspiring champions as well. So they're sort of super... Because you get these boss versions. You get... Um, Exalted demons, so you get boss versions of demons, and you have aspiring like chaos champions. So they're they're essentially space marines on crack. And if you kill the, if you kill an aspiring champion, he will be um, he'll actually be risen by the chaos gods as a chosen champion. So an even more jacked version. So another scenario where you have to, if you can help it, you want to blow him to bits with a grenade. Or chainsawed him in half. It makes it a bit harder to resurrect someone when they're cut in half, you know? Um, what else worth- Oh, here we go. Shotgun. Nice. So it's- it's- it's pretty good against these little blue dudes because they're strength 3, so... You know, you're not really losing out on damage and they are melee rushes. Um... Yeah. How good is this, though? That might be enough, actually. What I'll just say in closing is, um... The game does some really interesting stuff. How do, how do I put this without spoiling it? Alright, I'll give you one, one snippet. You essentially go into more of a, a sort of cinch, because he's the... Uh, what is it? The Master of... Lord of Change, or whatever, right? So you start going more into that. Yeah, and more chaos corruption. Look at this. I didn't know he does that. He reads. He reads a book <laughs> when he's idle. So good. Yeah, very good. Um, and uh, it it does this graphic. I won't show it because you should play it. But it will. It does this graphical thing where you can see the portal, like uh, the realm ripping through the wall, and you can see into it. And if oh, how do I describe this? If you've ever seen in one of these sort of games where you accidentally clip through the world and you can see through textures and that, you'll understand they're using that effect intentionally to show you this weird chaos dimension. And as you as you sort of look around, you can see into the depths. So you can see through this wall texture. There's nothing here behind it, but in the depth of it, you can see like the chaos realm layered underneath it. It's just so clever. Uh, anyway, I'm gushing. Um, uh, as much as I am of this time period, I don't play boomer shooters a lot. I just don't. It's not really my taste these days. I think there are, and there's committed YouTube channels that are, are absolutely committed to living in that time period, and they're going to love this. But even as me, a fair weather boomer shooter player, you know, an enjoyer of Doom and Duke Nukem and Quake and all that, I can tell you that this is, this is fantastic, um, and and relatively cheap. And just absolute balls out fun. Um, yeah, I love it. And, you know, of course, the best button in the world. I don't think he runs out of things to say, which is wild. Anyway, I love it. Okay, cool. Team, enough of that. Let me know what you reckon. You should check it out. Uh, it should be out when this video goes up. I think that's how it works. Um, check it out. Team, we might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.